Hey, it's the Cheap Buying with Board Games. This is a review of Command and Colors Medieval from GMT. Now, when I did the unboxing, I prefaced that when I picked up Medieval, or when they sent me Medieval, I didn't pick it up, um, I had this preconception that it was going to be uh, knights in suits of armor. Not yet. All right, this is the core system. Um, this is like the early medieval period. So this is the Huns and the uh, Eastern Romans or the Byzantine Empire. What you do have here are super heavy cavalry, all right? Uh, and you have Huns on horseback with light bows that can hit and run or can try and pick at you from a distance, and leaders you can take special actions with cards if you have tokens. Let me go in and show you. It's commanded colors, so I'm going to cover a little bit of basics on how that works with left, center, right, some cards, basic leaders, basic movement, basic combat, nothing, Deep that I'm going into here on this review, but let's go look at that. We'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, I've just got the first scenario set up just so you can kind of see what it looks like. I've also done something a little different. When I play, and definitely when I show this, and I'll lean the camera up here in a second to come over the top. Let me move that up so we can avoid some glare. I like to lay the pieces down on their face. So when you're playing, you'll probably play with the pieces more like that. But I'm going to tell you, it's probably because I'm getting old. I have a hard time seeing these guys. So even when I play, I play some like this. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out for new players is you'll have sections of this board, a left, a center, a right. I'm going to grab a couple pencils so you can see what that looks like. So there's a dashed line right here and there's a dashed line right here hello come on in there boom so you can see clearly left center right that line extends all the way down to the other side so my opponent's left center and my opponent's right and that is important because you have cards in this game if you've never played any of the cnc games that will tell you how to order units based on uh, left center right sometimes you can move like in this case three sometimes you can move two in each section in this game i won't be able to find it but you can even have cards that'll say activate any uh you know one heavy unit uh, which would be a red square in each of the sections so the sections are huge um, we'll zoom in on some of these units so you can see, but you've got light, which is like green circles, medium, which are blue triangles. I feel like I'm eating lucky charms and red, which are red squares. And there are some beautiful cards or some inspired action stuff that I'll show you guys in a second, but, uh, typical GMT player aid cards, top quality, very nice. And in commands and colors, these, um, cards break down the type of unit what it can and can't do how far it can move uh, uh, i'll cover more of this in a second on the units but it makes it really easy so you really don't have to refer back to the rules very often let me roll over to the dice real quick and a couple other counters hold on and i'll zoom in all right so you can see the bow right here the bows a lot of the mounted units um, will have light bows. And the way you're going to show that on a particular block is you're going to just add that counter on there. And now they have um, a way to kind of, well, not kind of, they'll launch some tacks from distance on you. Um, the dice, these are awesome. Phenomenal. They feel good. Um, no stickers that have to be put on little blocks. They roll nice. They've got rounded edges, um, top quality. All right. We also have these circular inspired action tokens these are really neat and they're unique to this game system here with medieval coming out if you were to play come on focus in a leadership card so it'll have leadership in the title 
and you spend, you could also gain one of these inspired actions if you didn't have any, but if you spend one, it allows you the option of playing some unique inspired actions that are on a player aid card. So you can see rally, mounted charge, uh, redeploy. And what's very interesting, whether you're playing the Romans or the Huns or whichever the titles, mounted charge, foot onslaught rally are, are the same in title, but they're slightly different in action based on the group that you're playing. So those are um, very nice. There's several leadership cards in the deck. Again, I can't get it to focus. And um, it allows a, a lot of tactical depth and variation. So how does a turn go in the game? Quite, quite simple. You take your hand of cards. I would have more cards than this, but I'm going to show you. I decide I'm going to play this order three units left card. So again, I'm looking at the map. My dotted line, I should have left my pencil on there, runs right down this section. So my left is this area over here and all of these units, there's a leader down here as well, that can move. Now for the purpose of this explanation, I'm going to move my light mounted units, my medium ones, and my heavies. They're not super heavy. I'll show that on the card in a second. I'm not going to move any of my foot troops at this point in time, but I could. I can move any three units on the left side of the map. So I want to show this player aid and how good it is. So you can see it's showing all of my units here. All right, it's showing the Huns over here. But all I have to look at, so I'm, I've told my opponent I'm going to move uh, my light cavalry troop right now. So again, light matches my sticker. I can see he can move four hexes and he has a bow or spear. Sorry, I actually have this guy. I keep pointing at the spear guy. He can fire three. So let me use my other hand so I don't shade it. Again, you can see it. There he is with his little light bow. He can move three. He can move four. One, two, three. I probably wouldn't do this, but I'll go four. I'll show you why. All right, he would probably stand off and use that bow action, but now he could do close combat because he's adjacent to either this unit or this unit here. Probably not where he'd want to be, but we don't do any combat at all until we've moved all the units that I've declared that I'm going to move. So we come back in because now I want to use, I want to move these little medium guys. So we're moving my medium cavalry. They've got a little triangle, all right? We come over their medium. We see I can move three. You're saying, what is this? Well, the Huns do have a firing range with little light bows. The Romans, the Byzantine Empire, does not. They've got a dash. So my medium guys have no bow range. They can't reach out and shoot at all, but they can move three. One, two, three. They just move over here. They're not going to be in any combat at all. So now we're looking at my heavies right here, and we come in again to the handy play raid. Now you're going to see, had they been these very super heavy, very super heavy, just super heavy, cataphract cavalry, they would have a little white box around their little red square. They don't. They're these guys, but you'll see two heavies for this reason. Now, but you can see they move two, and they have the same issue. The Huns have bows, again, little light bows, but my guys do not, and they sit there and go one, two, and just move up. If I'm in close combat uh, with another unit, in other words, adjacent, um, I have to do close combat. I can't decide to launch some arrows out over there. So when you come in, just to show it on the card again and how helpful it is. So again, we have this unit here. All right, he's moved four. I could have done range combat had I not gotten into the close combat area. A real cool thing is had I been stationary the turn that I decided to do ranged combat. In other words, I gave him an order and I didn't move him at all. I could roll two dice and engage at uh, a range of three. Or if I had moved and not moved into close combat, I could roll one die. This says I can. So it'll even tell you if you can't. All of these guys can close combat. And I'm going to be using two 
close combat dice. Now there's an asterisk down here that talks about light bow cavalry and plus one when ordered by a mounted charge command. I did not use that card, so we just know it's going to be two. So I come over, I grab two dice, and the thing that to me still is so much different and sometimes not as intuitive for me in this system is that when you're rolling these die, what I'm looking to do is match the unit, the color of the unit I'm attacking. So we've got a light infantry unit here and here we've actually got a warrior unit that's got a boxed um, medium triangle in it. So let's just say I'm going for these units right here. So I come in and I roll, I knock a bunch of pieces around, and I get a retreat symbol and a hit. So we're gonna flip over the other side of the card, shows the Hun that I'm attacking. Gosh, I got glare, there we go, gosh. So it's this guy here. All right, we're sliding over to see, can he ignore any hits? No, he cannot. So you'll see down here, Sometimes units can, like in this case, this medium unit can ignore uh, one sword uh, from a lower class, but this guy can't, or this unit can't. Green counter. Can they evade? Yes, they can, but my horse troops are going to be faster, so there was no evasion because my guys were mounted. What that basically is, the lighter troops can oftentimes engage, and I'll explain it briefly. Uh, they can uh, basically pull back from a heavier unit. They're faster, they're more mobile. Uh, momentum, advance, and retreats. They will retreat two hexes, which is what that flag says. All right, so first, this is a perfect roll. I didn't even set it up, I rolled it. I'm attacking this lighter unit. It is green, it's a green circle. So this unit, focus, takes a hit, and I get rid of one of the blocks. The other interesting thing, which can be devastating in Command & Colors games, and no less here, is this retreat symbol. So as I just explained on the card, this unit has to retreat two when the flag symbol is shown. Luckily, there is not a unit here. There is one here. You cannot retreat into um, another unit he decides he's going to go back to here, which is great. However, we've got a problem. Let me pan up just a little bit. He cannot retreat for that second one. He can't retreat off to the sides. It's got to be back toward the edge of the board, the back part of uh, that player's board, and he cannot retreat into these units. So he's pinned, and it's as if he took even more damage because he couldn't, and he loses another one. Now, had this guy been forced, or this unit been forced to retreat four, he would have retreated one and then taken three more damage. So if you don't leave yourself an opening uh, to fall back on, units get devastated way easier when they're retreating if they can't fall back um, than if, you know, you just normal or take a normal hit. Um, it makes, it really is a huge part of the tactical uh, part of the game is making sure that uh, you don't get your units stuck in a way that they fall back. Now, there are some things where sometimes you can ignore retreats and things. We're not going to go into that. I just wanted to explain how that works in this case. One more little thing to show. So we've got here momentum. So we've got my bow unit here. We're coming all the way across. You can see he has advance, move one hex, bonus close combat. So I have the option. I don't have to do this. Maybe I want to move up to here and I can do a bonus close combat. But let's say I was just a little more cautious and I decided I want to attack this warrior unit. So this warrior unit is medium infantry. Come on. And it's got a little white box around it. That means they're doing something a little special. Uh, they are like wild guys. 
So bringing them on again, just to show these wild fellas, you can see their medium. We're looking down here. Now again, they're being attacked, but I wanted to show you. They could move too. There is no ranged combat that they do. They've got this cool thing. They're kind of crazy. They got a bloodlust up. So they don't have a may, the Romans may close combat. These guys, if they were the attackers and they're adjacent, they must. They've got a very cool thing where if they haven't lost any units, so they're still intact. They basically got their bloodlust up. They're fired up. They can roll four die instead of three. So again, I'm rolling two die against this unit here. Well, hello. That is nice. Again, we have a perfect scenario to show you. So we have a blue hit. They will lose. If I can look through the monitor and actually touch the right piece. They will lose one. But we've got swords. So what do swords do? Well, sometimes swords work as almost like a wild card, a hit. Um, they don't do anything in ranged combat, but I'm not firing bows. I'm in close combat. So I've got to go look again at my unit. And this is, again, where I'm going to tell you the player aid's phenomenal. So I'm coming across, all right, and I'm looking at CC special. No sword hits. So the sword for this unit doesn't do anything. Anything. And the very nice thing about taking that first hit, or that only hit, because that's a miss, is that this unit now won't get that bonus four if he comes and attacks me or one of my other units in the future. So I'm not going to, there's more combat I could explain, but the gist is really you're rolling the dice. Um, generally, you're matching, the, you're, you're looking for the color to match the unit you're attacking, and any other modifiers, changes, specials, things you can ignore, ranges, um, are all handled so nicely on your card that it allows you to just flip back and forth and reference, and it allows you to get the battles going. Some of the aspects with leaders. So leaders, imagine a mounted leader. Let me set this down so you guys can see it. Um, leaders can do a few things. Uh, in combat in particular, they can inspire the units. And what it does is allow that if you roll the leader helmet, it would have counted as a hit. So when you have a leader attached, they can inspire greater combat. Um, they will not attack if they're by themselves, but if they're attached or adjacent to a unit, they can have that inspiring effect. If the unit I had attacked had had a leader similarly situated, either attached or adjacent, the unit would also have the ability to battle back as long as it didn't retreat. Leaders can also bolster and allow a unit to ignore a flag. They, of course, assist in movement with certain cards that have a leadership action. Sometimes you can only move units that have leaders that can influence them. And they can allow foot units to have a, uh, a momentum advance with a bonus close combat attack. One other thing to show on uh, a light cavalry unit that has bows is the ability to do a Parthion shot. So let's say it was the Hun's turn and this uh, warrior unit does an attack, a CC attack, close combat against this cavalry unit. They'll do their normal attack. They'll roll, see if they get greens hit. Um, but if I declare a Parthion uh, shot, what I'll be able to do is evade so I'll take whatever hits I get, and then I can evade, and I can roll dice back against the unit. Now, only, in this case, blue would be a hit, so I wouldn't count retreats or anything of that nature, but I could fire as I'm basically man maneuvering away from the unit. All right, let me explain an inspired action. So I have a token. Uh, you'll start the game generally with some. You can earn them if you play a leadership card. That's any card that has leadership in the title. So if I did not have any inspired action tokens and I play a leadership card, I could simply do what the card says. All right. And then I could gather a leadership, uh, inspired leadership token. But let's assume I have one. So I've played a card and I don't want to do the text here. The card is played. I pitch out my uh, inspired leadership token, and now we come in, 
and I can pick basically any one of these cards as if uh, they were the action that I take. So I still got to declare the units that are going to get them, but you can see there's some neat, neat things. I love darken the skies. So you can see when playing a leadership command card, which is what I just did, spend one inspired action. I just did that. The token is ranged weapon units. When ordered, must fire twice with one additional die. You can see how these inspired um, action tokens work and allow you to do these more tactical things. Now, let's say I did not have um, any of these leadership cards in my hand, yet I still wanted to use a token to perform an action. I could use it, the token, to play one of these battlefield actions. So, and you can see it's move a leader, a battle bonus, or bravery. So you can still do a battlefield action if you use your tokens. So these inspired action tokens are powerful. And again, if you play a leadership card you don't have any, you're going to gain one. And if you don't have the card, you can always use the standard battlefield actions. All right, final thoughts. As you can see, I'm surrounded by Richard Borg's and, and Colors designs. This system is phenomenal. It's light. It's period thematic. It's easy to teach. It's fun to play. I don't even know what else. It's probably like 18 other things. So, of course, we're on Medieval. I have expansions for Ancients. This is kind of, not kind of, this is a spiritual successor of Ancients. It feels like it leaves, let me get the glare off, it leaves Ancients and goes right into Medieval. Of course, I would imagine they'll have at least three more expansions of Medieval to cover the thousand years of that. I have Battle Cry, the 150th Anniversary Edition, not even out of the shrink. Love the Civil War, but hello. I've got Memoir 44, which was the first Command and Colors game that I ever got, and expansions, expansions, expansions. I have expansions for this, and the PSC has been doing a heck of a job with World War I. So, is it worth picking up? No, what I don't have is Napoleonics. Sorry, guys, never really got into that era. I'm sure it's phenomenal. Maybe I should. Should you get Medieval? If you enjoy Command and Colors, it's all about the theme. Do you like the theme? This leans toward ancient style. I'm going to say if you like ancients, you're going to like medieval. It's also obviously going to lead into a lot of the knights in shining armor type combat in the future. So you're building toward that. Specifically toward medieval. The inspirational tokens are awesome. The ability to play the leadership style cards as you tact tactically see fit is perfect. You're less at the whim of the cards, just do you have the tokens. And if you have a leader card that played and you don't have the tokens, you can get a token. Perfectly mitigates, in my opinion, um, those issues and allowing you to work toward a strategy, be flexible, follow your own muse. I'm going to be honest with you, that's what I do. In these games, I love when I can play around with my own ideas, my muse, my thoughts. What do I want to do? The system is so simple that it allows you to really attach the theme to it and then play around. So I dig it. I wanted to put all these on here to show you that I like this system. Stepping away from the particulars of medieval, I like this system because it is light war gaming. It feels true to the genre that you're playing, at least with the ones that I have played. 
so it doesn't feel like it's just a uh, pasting on, hey, CNC, you know, whatever. I, Red Alert, I still haven't played that. But I called before they ever came out with it. I was like, this can be done in space. So I'm a fan because I like games, war games that are accessible, easy to teach, and fast to play. That is this entire series, and Medieval in particular, in a nutshell. In specific for what GMT did with Medieval. GMT is a master, not only strong boxes, hello, but the helper aids that just make playing easy. The other reason these are out here is because I will oftentimes pick up one of these different CNC games and put it out on the table to play. And it doesn't take me long, and especially with GMT and their helper aids, it takes me five minutes to kind of unpack myself and say, what's different with this one again? I mean, clearly I know left, center, right, and I know the basics of how the cards are going to work and the basics of how Comet's going to work, but GMT's additional cards pretty much make it unpack, set it up, and play. And that, for the last five years, have been what I'm looking for. War games with theme, with accuracy, but not simulation, and fun to play. Boom! That's what we got. That's what it is. Medieval, and there's more to come. I guarantee it. See you guys. G, audio important.